Foundation Engineering A foundation is one of the most critical components of a structure. It acts as an interface between the building and the ground, ensuring stability and proper load distribution. Without a strong and well-designed foundation, a structure is at risk of failure due to sediment, soil movement, or external forces. This chapter explores the functions of foundations, types of foundations, methods for determining safe bearing capacity, stress and sediment analysis, and techniques to reduce differential sediments. 1. Functions of Foundation A foundation serves several important purposes in a structure. Some of its primary functions are 1.1 Load Distribution The foundation transfers the load of the building to the underlying soil or rock. It ensures that the load is spread over a large area, preventing excessive pressure on any single point, which could lead to soil failure. 1.2 Providing Stability A properly designed foundation ensures the stability of the structure against various external forces, such as wind, earthquakes, and vibrations. It prevents tilting, overturning, or sliding. 1.3 Preventing Settlement Settlement occurs when the soil beneath the structure compresses under its weight. A well-constructed foundation helps distribute the load evenly to prevent excessive settlement, which could lead to cracks or structural failure. 1.4 Resisting Soil Movements Some soils, such as expansive clay, tend to shrink and expand with changes in moisture content. The foundation should be designed to resist these soil movements and prevent structural damage. 1.5 Protection Against Natural Disasters A good foundation can enhance the ability of a structure to withstand earthquakes, floods, and other natural calamities by anchoring the building firmly to the ground. Two Types of Foundations Foundations are broadly classified into two main categories. One, shallow foundations open foundations, 2. Deep foundations. 2.1 Shallow foundations, open foundations. Shallow foundations are used when the load of the structure is not very heavy and the soil at shallow depths has adequate bearing capacity. These foundations transfer loads to a depth that is relatively close to the surface. The common types of shallow foundations are 2.1.1 Strip Footing A strip footing is a continuous rectangular or trapezoidal strip of concrete that supports walls or closely spaced columns. It is commonly used in low-rise buildings where soil has good bearing capacity. 2.1.2 Spread, Isolated, Footing Spread footings, also known as isolated footings, are used to support individual columns. They are usually square or rectangular slabs of concrete that distribute the load to the underlying soil. 2.1.3 Combined Footing When two or more columns are close to each other, a single footing is used instead of multiple isolated footings. This is called a combined footing. It helps in distributing the load more effectively. 2.1.4 Raft, Mat, Foundation a raft foundation consists of a large, continuous concrete slab that supports multiple columns or an entire building. It is used in cases where the soil has a low bearing capacity and requires a larger area to distribute the load effectively. 2.2 Deep Foundations Deep foundations are used when the upper soil layers are weak and the load needs to be transferred to deeper, stronger soil or rock layers. These foundations provide greater support and stability. The two most common types of deep foundations are 2.2.1 Pile Foundations Pile foundations consist of long, slender columns, piles, that are driven deep into the ground to support structures. There are two main types of piles. End-bearing piles. These piles rest on a hard stratum, rock or dense soil and transfer the load directly to it. Friction piles. These rely on skin friction between the pile surface and surrounding soil to transfer the load. Pile foundations are commonly used for high-rise buildings, bridges, and structures on weak or waterlogged soils. 2.2.2 Well, Caisson, 
foundations. Well foundations, also known as caissons, are large hollow structures that are sunk into the ground or water to support heavy loads, such as bridge piers and offshore structures. They are typically cylindrical in shape and provide high stability in deep water conditions. 3. Determination of Safe Bearing Capacity The Safe Bearing Capacity, SBC, of soil is the maximum pressure that the soil can safely support without excessive settlement or failure. It is crucial to determine the SBC before constructing a foundation. The methods used to determine SBC include 3.1 Plate Load Test This test involves placing a rigid steel plate on the ground and gradually applying a load while measuring the settlement. The test helps determine how much load the soil can bear before excessive settlement occurs. 3.2 Standard Penetration Test SPT. In this test, a split spoon sampler is driven into the ground using a hammer. The number of blows required to drive the sampler a certain distance, usually 30 cm, is recorded as the standard penetration number, N value. A higher N value indicates stronger soil. 3.3 Cone Penetration Test, CPT. In this test, a steel cone is pushed into the soil at a controlled rate and the resistance is measured. This test helps determine the soil strength and bearing capacity. 3.4 Empirical Formulas In some cases, empirical formulas based on soil type, consistency, and laboratory test results are used to estimate the SBC of soil. Fourth Stress and Settlement Analysis When a structure is built on soil, it applies stress to the underlying ground. If the soil cannot handle this stress properly, settlement occurs. Settlement is categorized into three types. 4.1 Immediate Settlement Occurs shortly after the structure is constructed. Usually happens in sandy soils or stiff clay. 4.2 Consolidation Settlement Occurs over time as water drains from the soil. Common in clay soils. Can take months or even years to complete. 4.3 Differential Settlement Happens when different parts of a structure settle at different rates. Can cause cracks in walls, uneven floors, and structural failure. 5 Methods of Reducing Differential Settlements To minimize the risk of differential settlement, the following techniques are used. 5.1 Proper Soil Investigation Before constructing a building, a detailed soil investigation should be conducted to determine the soil properties and bearing capacity. 5.2 Uniform Load Distribution The foundation should be designed to distribute the load evenly over the soil to prevent excessive settlement in one area. 5.3 Use of Raft Foundations Raft foundations help in distributing loads over a large area, reducing differential settlement. 5.4 Soil Improvement Techniques Methods like soil compaction, grouting, and chemical stabilization improve soil strength and reduce settlement. 5.5 Deep Foundations If the soil near the surface is weak, using deep foundations like piles or caissons can transfer the load to stronger soil layers. 5.6 Flexible Structural Design Buildings should be designed to accommodate minor settlements without causing significant structural damage. Conclusion Foundation engineering is an essential aspect of structural design. Selecting the right type of foundation based on soil conditions ensures the stability, durability, and safety of a structure. By understanding soil behavior, stress distribution, and settlement control techniques, engineers can construct buildings that stand the test of time.